Today we're going to look at the into future trait a little bit, which you see inside the Surreal DB Rust code all the time, and on the inside the uh, the Rust uh, SDK. One of the one of the first examples is just uh, this super simple example. You make some Rust structs, and then you start a database, and then you sign in, give your username and password, and so on. And then it uh, creates some, uh, does some queries. So it makes some uh, some people, and then it selects from them, and it's pretty simple. And then uh, if you run that, and then pull up Surrealist here. This is before we get into the the Rust code. Then you can just uh, select something from person. So this is just to show that all these queries work. So it makes these uh, these people, and they have. Uh, these fields and uh, so yeah it works perfectly which is fine don't need to look at that but uh, if you're if you're learning rust and you're really into rust you might be wondering okay how did how did all this work inside the CDK and uh, one interesting thing is the uh, the massive use of the into future trait and you see it in here for example so how, how did the database get made in the first place so there's this uh, this method called new and you can see you're calling await and then question mark so it's uh it's uh it returns a future and it's a result so you uh, use the question mark operator but if you look at this if you click on new it's actually not an async function and that can be that can be confusing at first but this is a sign this is a, a hint that that this uh this thing is using the the into future trait because if you look at this you know, you, you might be wondering, okay, how is a database created? So you usually click on a function and you get all the all the inner details to see what's going on. But in this case, all it does is it makes something called a connect and there's no, there's nothing async here. There's no awaiting. It's just making, makes a once log, phantom data, capacity zero. Like all it does is it makes this, uh, this simple struct. And then you might be wondering, so how did, uh, how did you even call a wait on that? And the, the way that works is uh, it's because of the into future trait. So if you see this await on a struct and you have no idea why you were able to await on it, it's probably because uh, it uh, implements into future. So into future, into future for, no, hold on, I think we're not on the right page. Into future for connect. And when you do that, that's where you can see all the details. So this is finally all the details you want to see. So it um, makes a future and, uh, and inside there, then you have all the interesting stuff. So you have an endpoint, you have a client, you try to connect to the client, that's an async function. So you can see, okay, here's all the, all the details of when the client is trying to connect. And that's probably what, uh, what you're looking for. And so you see this all the time inside Surreal DB. It's a pattern that uh, that gets used quite a bit. So if you see, let's see, for example, use NS, it returns a use NS, a type called use NS. So you go to here and whoops, and you click on that. And there should be, there you go, there it is again, into future. So all of these, pretty much everything returns one of these, uh, they're called async builders, by the way. So an update returns an update. And this is kind of similar to when you when you create an iterator in Rust. So let uh, C equals um, something dot chars. You can see this will create a chars. So there's, it's kind of like a, a long standing pattern. You have like these uh, kind of like first class um, types. And the reason so a lot of the time, this is just uh, if you using in, into future or not is kind of like a, a design decision, but it's good for making uh, the async builders. And the way that works is so you can see it inside into future. So when when it was first um, first created, there's a lot of discussion about what what is the point of this when you can actually just uh, Make an, make an async function and that'll return a future. So why would you need this? And what is best for is those uh, async builders. And that is because, so here it is. 
When implementing futures manually, there will often be a choice between imp implementing future into future. Implementing future is a good choice in most cases. However, into future is useful when you have these async builder types. And so they have this, uh, inside the standard library, there's this, this small example, which is called a multiply. And then it has these, these, uh, these methods where you can change it before you call async. And then uh, in this case, it's a really small, just a toy function, but it gives you an idea. So you have this, you make a multiply, and then you can call these methods and you can change it a little bit. And then finally at the end, that's when you call await and that will convert, convert it to a future and then await. And so that is the pattern you see all the time there. And so if you see a struct that's been returned from a function that's not async and uh, it gets it gets await called on it, then uh, look for the into future trait and you should see all the information you want inside there.